Yeah. Um, and this is my slide, you can tell, because there's a bunch of Simpsons characters on it. Um, I am not capable of giving a talk without putting some childish element into it, which is probably my dysfunction. But I kind of broke up the, the discussion of working with college students and the college campus into three different areas, the students, the institution, and the faculty. And I've just kind of put some stuff in here. I know we have plenty of time to ask questions and things like that. I have no idea what kind of things people from the community might want to do with college campuses. So we're going to try to cover a lot of it, but uh, anything that you want to ask in the question section would be um, fair game. But basically, we're, Cassie's in a second going to talk about the students, uh, organizing volunteer opportunities, internships, service projects, things like that. A lot of the things that your organizations can draw volunteers to. Um, how to work with college students. I'll talk a little bit about the institutions, working with them on the sites, things like that. And at the end, we'll kind of give you some different people to, to maybe contact if you're kind of interested in. So, if you wanna go. So I get to talk about my favorite thing, which is students. So I'm just gonna take a couple seconds to get on my soapbox real quick and try to encourage you guys as to why we should be engaging college students in our conservation efforts. One, the reason that students are going to college is that they're trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. They're going to school to figure out what career paths they want to take. They're going to school to learn new things. And what a better demographic of people to reach out to to do local conservation are these folks that are trying to figure out and learn more about the lives around them. Two, um, despite what the popular, me popular media says, college students are not these lazy millennials that don't care about anything. That is not true at all. These students are more engaged in the world around them and know more about global events than I sure did in college. And part of that is due to their connectivity to technology. So we have to use that to our advantage if we're gonna to try to do effective conservation. And three, college students vote. So we spend a lot of time influencing young kids. They still have about you know 10 to 15 years to the point where they're voting age. So it is very, very important if we want positive things done in conservation that we reach out to our, our voters and our future community members. So with that, let me give you some pro tips of how to engage uh, college students in some of the activities that you might have uh, going on around town. So students are always looking for volunteer opportunities, but those opportunities need to be meaningful. And that does not mean they need to be doing something that's gonna earn them a Nobel Prize. That's not what I mean. But if you have some sort of project, you need to encourage them as to understand why it's important. So even if it's picking up trash, you could say, you know, we need to keep this litter from getting into the bayous because of all the repercussions it has to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's just as simple as making something very meaningful. Um, another pro tip is that if you have a project that you need to get done, it cannot be during the week. College students cannot leave class, or they should not leave class, and I do not encourage them to skip class to do volunteer opportunities, even though if I'm really like supportive of it. So I know that that is a, a challenge for some organizations because their staff are primarily there from, from Monday to Friday. But if you want college students to come out and help, you have to plan events on the weekends. Um, also, college students are at that threshold of being adults, but not quite yet. So if you're gonna work with a group of students, you can't just expect that they're gonna know what to do. So you're gonna have to be a little patient. Um, I just worked with some students from HCC at the pocket of prairie planting that was done at the University of St. Thomas, and I gave this girl a pair of snips and walked away, and I came back and she was just like, I don't know how to use this. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. So, and it made her feel bad, but she just didn't have experience with that sort of thing. But if I had handed her a computer, she probably could have programmed it, right? So you have to um, just be aware that yes, they can do things that children cannot, but they still need some instruction. Um, additionally, one thing that works really well with college students, especially if you want to big, get a big group out, is to work with clubs and groups that are mentored by a faculty person. And on our very last slide, we're going to give you um, some people here in the area that you can reach out to for any sort of events that you may have. So the other thing that I want to mention about working with students is um, internships are fantastic. That's a great way to get college students to help out. And it will, uh, the internships work the best if you do offer a little bit of pay. That will definitely get out a diversity of students. So the right students might have the wherewithal to do something for free, but my Houston Community College students cannot. They need gas money, um, and they need lunch money. And so if you want to get these students to come out and help you, 
just offering them even a measly sum of eight bucks an hour, that will get them to come out and to participate. Um, let's see, what else do I want to mention? Because I know I'm running out of time. So also what's really important if the student is going to do an internship with you or any sort of volunteer with you is that you emphasize some skills that they might, or might learn. Um, students are always trying to build the repertoire of things that they know how to do to put on a resume or put on a CV so they can get potential jobs. So even if something as simple as identifying plants or learning about soils, that is all relevant material that they want to learn about. So I'm going to switch a little bit away from the students and talk about working with the institution itself. Um, and there are many things that you can do with an institution. So uh, just to talk a little bit about our, our most recent experience, we built a pocket prairie on the campus. And this is something that Jaime and Cassidy have been in my ear about for about a year and a half, trying to get a pocket prayer on campus. And it's not easy to do things like this, because when you want to get university space, you have to take it from the facilities department. And they're not usually kind of connected with the kind of outreach things that you're trying to achieve. And so one of the things that I try to tell people, if you want to do something on a campus, you want, to, you want to build a garden on campus, you want to engage students, one of the quickest ways to do it is to find a faculty member or a staff member that regularly works with students. And I'll tell you, the way that we kind of got the students to, to, or the, to get the space on the campus was to actually get a student. Oh, does that mean i got to stop talking? You can continue to talk, but go ahead and start fielding questions as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Get a student to help you convince the rest of the campus to do it, okay? Um, research things, I think that people will talk about them. I think the best way is just to engage the faculty member themselves. I'll, I'll kind of open up a camp with questions. Do we have any, uh, go to the next slide, Cass, what are they? So these are people that we have like met and talked to that have done really great work and have helped. I'll kind of move out of the way in the middle. We even put their contact information up there. So there are people there that you could contact if you're curious. I guess we should be taking questions. Yeah, so Jaime's going to hopefully prove. You're going to. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post the slides and the talks. Yeah, because we know that you can't read that, sorry. Right. But, we but that. just to <laughs> add to that, these are just people. We didn't, like, these aren't personal communications. We just go on a website of a university and we look for people <laughs> that have worked with the them. There's other people that you can search for as well that are also very effective. We just know these are people that will be mad at us if you contact them and say that we sent them, so. <laughs> Um, I guess one thing to know, and yeah, I'll guess we'll open up for questions, uh, but one thing I'd like to note, if you are going to uh, uh, contact some of these individuals, um, please note in red, I've also given you some helpful hints when you're actually contacting faculty. It's actually important um, to contact them before semester starts. If you contact a faculty person in the middle of the semester, like, hey, I got this great project, it's, it's too late. Um, so if you want to get students to come out or do anything through a faculty member, you need to do it before the semester. Yes. Can you ever engineer a summer internship for college credit? That is a challenging thing to do. Um, a lot of that is interface with like the kind of curriculum that student is working with. So again, that's one that you want to go talk to a faculty member for. And at a school like mine, you could we could make something like that happen if there was a good project and there was a defined outcome of what the student was supposed to do. We could probably make that happen for like elective credit. But I think the larger the institution that you go to, the more complicated things like that are. I'm not working with uh, college, I mean not college, high school, school district. Yeah, I mean that's definitely a thing that you can do as well. So, this is all I'll say. The reason I like to work with college students is, is just there's a tiny bit of maturity difference there between the college kids. That is minuscule, but it really does matter. <laughs> also, they can drive to the works. They can drive to your. They can drive to the location, right? A lot of high school students. There are high schools that are looking for things like that. So St. Thomas High School, which is a high school that I've worked with. If you can go find like, it, so again, you have, instead of finding faculty member, you need to find a teacher. Right, and a teacher sometimes is really good at helping organize the process as well. Mm -hmm. the, the reason why I say that you need students at this age, a little of them are very they're fickle, right? They need a reason to come out. They'll come out, they'll do good work for you, but they need like the carrot 
And teachers and faculty members sometimes have the carrot to get students to come out there, whether it be course credit or I told you to go do it, right? And I've done that before. <laughs> Extra credit. Well, so. Extra credit works really well. So did you partner with any organizations to help get plants, like Monarch Games? Yeah, so I was going to talk about that. There are a lot of people brought plants in. Um, Jaime brought in a, a bunch of plants. We had just community volunteers that Jaime had sent out the emails to were just showing up with plants that they wanted to put out there. And we had plenty of them. Right now the site is kind of overrun with nut grass. So we're gonna have to go back <laughs> over there. Um, but you know, I, I think every semester I'd like to have communities come in with different plants and we can put them out there. And we even are gonna try to grow some ourselves. What about from a, from a private perspective? Like I'm, I'm a private contractor consultant. As far as getting co college students involved or, or an interning with my company or working on a project of mine that's, that's could be it could be a, uh, a residential or private pro project, but it could be also um, like a governmental project or a city or or a, you know contract project like that. So like the class, we said internship. <laughs> um, so like Jaime mentioned, we actually hosted uh, an environmental and conservation career forum uh, back in February. We're going to do it again in 2018. So if your firm would like to come and have a free table to meet college students and potentially look for interns, please so save the date, February 10th, uh, 2018. And if any of your organizations are interested, if you're a nonprofit uh, or uh, you know any other sort of group, a Texas Master Naturalist, we're going to be hosting this event. Um, and this, we had 160 participants, um, many of them from Houston Community College, so it was an incredibly diverse group of students that came out and were very interested. And actually, I know some success stories, but I know for one student for sure that got a job with SWCA after this conference. We're really proud of her. Um, so this is great. And the other thing that you can do is if you have internships that you know of, you can contact us or you can specifically contact those faculty members and they constantly send out potential internship possibilities to their students. I would not, and I hate to say this, I would not potentially uh, talk to career services, talk to faculty. <laughs> We're better talking to our students, yeah. yeah. I feel like the guy on the gong show. <laughs> Fabulous. So let, let me, since we're going to talk amongst ourselves, let me just tell you my experience. I was on a panel, and who was on a panel at this thing early in the year? I know Emily, you were, and it was uh, it was very uh, wonderful because we always talk about getting younger and more diverse in the environmental community. This is actually something that's a pipeline trying to point people in that direction. So I applaud them for doing that. All right. Who wants to start the conversation? Issues with college kids? Successes? Anything? I teach at a community college and I coerce my students to do extra credit very effectively. I found a good resource with high school students. If you can find a club on campus that has community service component, they are eager for projects. And so I'm, I teach at Lee College. We have an early college high school. And so I started working with the Spanish club there. And we, they bring out 20 to 50 volunteers um, once a month for us in the long semester. And those kids love coming out to the exploration green where we're restoring the farm. So one of the groups that you invited me to uh, Boys Scouts changed their requirements for rank, and they now have to do conservation hours, service hours for their ranks, for mm -hmm. higher ranks. So the Boys Scouts will be keen to come and work on the program. Just have some of the troops that will certainly help uh, Scouts help us. Actually, you guys are still talking for another two and a half minutes. And when you actually speak, because everybody doesn't, I forget that everybody doesn't know each other in the room, just tell people who you are real quickly and where you're from. 
My name is Ethan Beeson. I'm with the Vernon Park Conservancy. And uh, we actually have a couple of interns this summer uh, doing GIS work for us. And so uh, I hear a lot of opportunity or, or need for conservation type uh, efforts, whether they be volunteer or, or, or internship paid. How are people getting other more technical disciplines involved, whether it be technology, whether it be the sciences and stuff? They may not be interested in pulling weeds, but there's still other opportunities for interns or whatever to uh, uh, exercise their newly found skills and whatever disciplines are in in these types of environments. Is anybody doing things like that? Mm -hmm. Um, I think this goes back to knowing the faculty. So we have a really strong relationship with several u local universities, especially A&M. So we know like three or four faculty members and when we have a need, we just, hey, send us somebody who's really good at GIS or really good at wetland delineation or, you know, do you have any recent grads? So I think it comes back to that personal relationship because these guys, you know, they talk about their students all the time. They know them inside and out and working with them for years. No, no, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I actually went out and recruited as many universities trying to find ah. kids who had conservation skills as well as technical skills. And more often than not, I had either or. Uh, uh. And, and it's not, I'm actually asking this question yeah. to try to benefit the whole community effort here yeah. that, we're, that we're all talking about. Yeah. And I think that's one thing we're missing. And I, need, I think there needs to be more uh, technical or, or, or you know, more solid science skills added to the conservation movement. Gotcha. Can I plug your HD? Sure. Uh, my name is Sarah Lyons. I'm a student at UHD, and um, we actually have a lot of our students are older. So, you know, the maturity issues that you guys were talking about being slightly above high school, I may be slightly above high school. Most of our students are, you know, in their, in their 30s, and um, some of them are doing second careers. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Lisa Murata this summer doing a uh,